Even though our Roland FA-06 comes with over 2,000 built-in sounds, we would want to start from a clean slate uh, in learning how to program the tones. You can, of course, select any one of the 2,000 songs and modify any of the parameters and resave it in the user memory. But I thought a good experience here now would be to start from an initially clean slate and program the same whist whistling patch that we did on the modular. Our first order of business, our first step, is to get a tone, any tone, from the virtual synth engine into the active memory so that when we modify and save it we will be saving a tone that uses the virtual synthesizer virtual analog synthesizer pressing enter brings us to the menu of tones and as you can see from the left all of these are using the virtual analog synthesizer so we're just going to pick any one at random but we want a different one to what we used in any other program so let us say glass what is that saying glass FX pad so we press enter and our glass FX pad is now loaded into the active memory. How does it sound? Well that's not what we want. So we first of all can initialize it to a clean slate. And we said that we did that in the last lecture by pressing shift, selecting tone edit, and then selecting the tone utility and then going tone initialize are you sure yes it doesn't matter because we're not ruining the memory so the tone initialization is complete what does an initialized tone sound like that's the $64 question we're gonna answer now and all we have to do is to press the keyboard to hear it it starts from a very bland slate in this particular synthesizer only the first wave is active as you can see by the pink dot there next to one and it's set to a sawtooth wave which is not the wave that we want for our whistling patch so the first thing we're going to do first thing we're going to do is we are going to get out of this complicated mode and go into our simple editing mode by pressing zoom edit notice the zoom edit button there when we press zoom edit we got we get a simple oscillator uh, thing where we're presented with the wave and the variation now you will remember from the video that we did on the whistling patch we started with a triangle wave so we're going to turn it till we get a triangle wave and you will remember from our virtual analog discussion that the we had the purest triangle wave with variation C so we will turn it to variation C and now we can be sure our oscillator is giving us a pure triangle wave before we get into the envelope settings we want to adjust our low pass filter to make sure that we have a whistling tone and then we have remember we have to do some delayed LFO modulation and so forth you can watch our analog synthesizer recreation of this whistling patch but you can see that clearly the mode is low pass filter one here and the only thing that we want to do on this screen right now is adjust that cutoff because the cutoff is not cutting off anything right now 
So we want to turn the cut off till we get a sort of whistling sound. So we come down here and we go to the cut off and we are going to rotate the knob while listening to the sound. Right now we have the unobstructed triangle wave playing. It's a bit reedy. So as we lower as we lower our cutoff frequency it more like resembles a, a sine wave because we're cutting off the harmonics so we leave it there for now it's probably still a little bit high we can go a little lower and see how it sounds let's try it and see We've also lost some amplitude there as a result of the filtering action. But we leave it there for now. We can always turn up the volume a little bit so you can hear it. We said in the analog modular patch that the LFO, the delayed LFO, was the heart and soul of our whistling experience. And now we're here at the LFO tab. So we need to turn on key triggering for the LFO because we want to have a delayed LFO. So we come down here with our cursor until we have the cursor on the key triggering dot and we rotate the wheel to turn it on now then we come over here and uh, you notice it says fade time we increase our fade time which is the time that it will take for the LFO to grow to its maximum effect so we'll put it there for now to 40 and see how it goes Additionally, we want the LFO to affect our amplitude. So we're going to dial in some positive amplitude change here. We don't know how much to do it, but we're going to play with it and see how it sounds. And we also want it to affect our pitch. So we see where it says pitch depth here. We dial in some uh, pitch change so that will produce the vibrato we want. And we'll set that to about the same level. Uh, let's see how it's sounding now. Well, first of all, we could increase the rate a little bit, and then secondly, the fade time is not enough. So we come here over to the, we, the, the depth is probably too much as well, so we reduce that to about 20, and uh, we leave the amplitude set at the same thing for the moment, and we come over here to the rate, and... Um, the rate is a bit slow, I would say, so we increase the rate a little bit. Let's, we'll see whether we want it slower or faster. And um, definitely the fade time is not enough. So we come here and we increase the fade time to see what happens now. Alright, let's hear it now. Now the fade time is a little long so we can turn it back down a little bit. That sounds good. 
but perhaps our um, effect is still a little bit too pronounced so we can go over here now to the pitch and reduce that a little bit more we don't want it to be too obsessive so we come here now to the amplitude and redu reduce that a little bit more as well Perhaps we could still also reduce the fade time a little bit more. Alright, so that's beginning to sound like it now. Except that we need a little portamento. You will remember that we use the slew limiter to give us some portamento in the in the analog synthesizer so we move from the LFO over to the common because that's where the portamento tab is and we come down here now and we turn on the portamento and we check out we, we gotta set the time now to see if we have the right time we don't want it to be too We just want to take the edge off so the notes are not quite so pronounced. That might be a little too much. Let's take off a little bit of that and see how it goes here. That's more like it. Now we want to set our envelope, so we go back up here and uh, we are going to have a filter envelope and an amplitude envelope. Here we are at the filter envelope, so we need to dial in some attack here. Let's get to the attack one and let's bring it up to say, let's see, let's go to about 30. Uh, no, maybe we could go a little more, 40. 45 maybe that would look about right the decay we want a longer decay we go up to about go up to about a hundred decay the sustain we want the sustain up to all and uh, the release we want a long release on the filter so we'll do that about there and the envelope depth we're going to go up to maybe about half on that plus 40 let's see how alright so now, now then we move on from setting the ADSR for the envelope generator for the filter we move to set it for the VCA here we are on the amplitude we come down here now and we go with the sustain is already set to 127 so we go with around the same amount of attack and uh, the same amount of decay approximately and we want a little shorter release on this so we go about there tone is becoming very whistling but the um, the the vibrato and, and LFO has become a little overbearing there so we need to we need to go back and reduce that now somewhat here so we go back to the LFO 
and we come to the pitch amount um, perhaps it's the amplitude amount that's too much let's go to the amplitude no I think it's the pitch That's more like it. Perhaps we could do the same thing with the amplitude. Let's see. Reduce that a bit. Here's the finished product. Or perhaps you prefer whistling one. If we create a tone from scratch using it using the initialized tone setting, it's going to end up with no assignment, and that could make it a pain to find in the future. So you may want to assign it a category after you've created it so that you can easily find it, and we're going to do that now. You have to go back into the ed tone edit mode and make sure that you are in pro edit. So it should say tone edit pro at the top of the screen. Then you see where it says tone category. You come down there and you rotate the wheel until you find the category you want to put it in. The whistling should probably go into something to do with the human voice. Let's see if we can find uh, anything to do with the human voice. We're going here now. Solo strings, orchestral, solo brass, wind, flute, sax, recorder, vox choir. That would seem to be what we want. And uh, we see it's on tone. We press the tone, or we can press the tone key here. And uh, we just want to save it back as whistling. So we just press right, OK, and it's saved. If you don't do that tone right, then uh, the instant you change it to a different voice, a different sound, it's going to be gone. But now if we press exit, we can see that we have it's locked to that category of Vox and Choir and if we press enter if we press enter now we will see that the whistling appears here along with other vocoders, hyperventilation and all sorts of uh, voices that we have here in the voice category Let's quickly review the settings for the whistling patch that we've just done. In the common settings, which is what you're looking at right now, in the common settings, we have 
to put it into the pro edit mode because some of the settings are not uh, be able to be seen from the zoom. Now what do we have to look at here that's not standard to the init tone? The only thing that we have to actually change is the portamento. As we come down here now we will see that the portamento has to be changed. The portamento switch is turned on. The default is normally off. The portamento time is set to 23. And basically that's all we have to, to change. Okay? That's all we have to change. The portamento switch and time in the common settings. Now the next thing that we have to set is the oscillator but we can set that in the zoom edit mode. It's set to triangle wave variation C. Triangle wave variation C nothing else needs to be changed. This is a one oscillator patch so you notice that there is a pink dot next to one and, and two and three are turned off. So it's a one oscillator, one filter patch. Nothing needs to be set at all in the pitch. In the filter section, just make sure that the cutoff and resonance are set to zero. And um, we just have to set the ADSR as shown. 51, sorry, 31, 102, 127, 97, and plus 44. So these four settings, these five settings here have to be set. Low pass, filter, 24 dB, that's standard to when you initialize the tone. So really and truly, the cutoff has to be reduced from 127 to 0, and the five of these have to be set. In the case of the amp, the level has to be, well the level is 100 in the default, you can change it, but it's just basically these settings, 27, 101, 127 and 39 for the ADSR that have to be set. You can leave the level at 100 if you want or put it down to 60. In the LFO screen, in the LFO screen, the normal uh, default wave shape is triangle. You have to set explicitly the rate to 102. You have to turn on the key trigger. That's that little pink dot down here next to key trigger. You have to turn that on. And then you have to set the five settings. You have to have the fade time to 49, plus 12, plus 8, plus 5 on the pitch filter. Uh, pitch filter and amplitude depth we're not using pan so you can leave the pan at zero so you just have to set these four and uh, the key trigger and the rate in the LFO okay that's it and remember to save your patch to a blank tone and rename it and uh, we will see now what are the changes that are made to that for whistling 2 to change whistling 1 into whistling 2, you switch the mono poly mode to mono and you turn the legato switch off and you change the portamento mode to normal and you readjust the portamento time to 15. So you can rewind the video and listen to those four changes that we are making in the common tab. In the oscillator tab we are changing the wave to sine from triangle to sine and we are changing the wave variation to B. In the filter tab, 
the only change that we are making in the filter tab is to change the attack time from 31 to 15. That's the only change in the attack time of the filter tab. In the amplitude tab, we are changing the amplitude attack from 27 to 16 and changing the level to 127 from 66. Those are the only two changes in the amplitude tab. In the LFO tab we are changing the rate to 98 and we are changing the fade in time to 65. Fade in time to 65 and the rate to 98. Those are the only two changes between whistling 1 and whistling 2. So that's it guys. There's That's it. You just make those changes and save it back as whistling 2. And you have all of my two patches that you just heard. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel. And we'll see you soon again.